Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is James. Today, we're talking about how to set up an Electronium Miner in Windows. Luckily, this process is actually very simple. The guys over at the Electronium development team have done a lot of work with making the website very consumer-facing and simple to use. And also, a lot of the programs are also really well-developed and consumer-friendly so that it's really easy to get set up. And uh, really, honestly, it will take probably less than 15 minutes. So without further ado, let's get into this. So the first place that you need to go is my.electronium.com. Basically, this is going to make an account or a wallet, uh, which is similar to like a bank account where you have a long string of letters and numbers that represent almost like your bank account number. And that allows you to transfer your funds from the mining pool that we're going to talk about later to your actual wallet. That way you can use them and send them between friends, check your balance, all that kind of stuff. It's exactly like a bank account, but for cryptocurrency. So I already have an account set up and since it's linked to a phone number, I can't demonstrate making a new one because I've already used my number. But basically you go to the create account button down here, click that, go through the setup process. It's really easy. It'll send you like a verification code to make sure that your number is uh, linked up. That way you have two factor authentication and also just some uh, in case you forget your password and then I'll have you set up a pin. So once you created your account, go ahead and log in. It's gonna ask you for your pin. So I'm gonna enter mine here, click the I'm not a robot and we're gonna press continue. Now the website's gonna load, it's gonna load up my Electronium wallet. And the one thing that we're looking for is gonna be down here on the right, it's where this red loading uh, icon is. And basically that's gonna be our wallet address, or like I mentioned before, our bank account number, which is going to be what our miner uses to deposit the funds that it uh, receives from a mining pool into our actual account. So once this loads up here, sometimes it does take a second, we're going to press click to copy. Now that's copied. We're gonna come back here and I'm gonna make a new text document. And we're gonna just keep track of this just so that uh, we don't have to go back to these websites afterwards. So I'm gonna paste that. I'm gonna just reformat here, make that black. And then let's see, we'll keep it like that. So that is my wallet address. So that way now we have that written down. That way we can just copy and paste it when we need that later. The next information that we're gonna need is the actual mining pool that we're going to be taking a part of. The one that I found to be the best is uh, etn.spacepools.org. And the reason that I choose this one is because it has, I think, the most miners out of any pool. And what that basically means is if you imagine a pool as almost like a literal mine, if you have a lot more people mining in that mine, there's a good chance you're probably gonna find that little gold nugget in that mountain. But if you have like, you know, 10 or 15 people working, it's gonna take you a lot longer to actually get that reward. Now, while you do have to end up splitting that total reward with the people that were working towards uh, achieving that reward, you're gonna get rewards a lot more frequently because there's a lot more people solving these equations. And also it's about the amount of work that you do. So if you have a pretty powerful system or even just a semi-decent system, there's a good chance you're probably going to outperform a lot of other miners, meaning that you're going to get a higher chunk of that total reward. And since you're getting that more frequently, you're going to get a lot more rewards uh, and slowly build up that value a lot faster. So that's why I went with this one. And we're going to need a little bit more information before we actually get started. So we're going to go over here to the Getting Started tab. The one thing we're going to have to copy down is this pool.etn.spacepools.org. We're going to copy and paste that pool address back into our text document. Let me make sure that's on a new line and then set that color to black so we can see it. And then the last little bit that we need is down here where it says mining ports. So there's one aspect of mining that is pretty important and that is difficulty. So the idea is this pool will automatically adjust the difficulty that your system is experiencing to make sure that it's making the most of your system but not giving it too much to the point that it can't solve the equations and not giving it um, you know, too little difficulty so that it's just solving stuff and then waiting for the next little bit to come in. It's going to automatically adjust that difficulty and make sure that you're getting the right amount of work that your computer can handle. So you're getting rewarded accordingly and not losing out on potential profit. So for a regular system, if you have like, you know, one or two GPUs, I'd probably recommend this middle port here, the 5555. That's going to start you out at a pretty decent difficulty and the pool will automatically adjust uh, to make sure that it's at that right level. But that's going to start you out at probably a pretty reliable system. Now, if you're just mining on like a CPU, I would recommend just the 1111. If you're on like an i3 or a very like a 750 Ti, then maybe the 3333 port. Um, and if you have like, you know, a Vega card or something like that, then maybe the 777 would probably be the best for you. But for most people, I would recommend this middle port here. And the way to add that onto our link is we're going to put a colon and 5555. 
Now that's all the information that we're actually going to need. The only other thing that we're going to need to get started is the actual mining program. And I'm going to leave a zip to that down below because I've included another program in there that makes life a little bit easier. And I'll explain that once we get to that point. But just download that file and extract it and then we'll kind of continue on here. So right now I'm remotely accessing one of my mining machines and I have that zip file open. There are a few extra files in here that uh, I'm using for personal use. So it might look a little bit different, but the main programs are gonna be there. So to get this set up, we're gonna come down uh, and keep scrolling down till we see the XMR-Stack program. We're gonna press enter and we're gonna start that. There's a few informational bits that it needs to get started. So since Electronium is a sub coin of Monero, it's going to use that algorithm. So we're gonna type in Monero here, press enter, our pool address. So I'm going to come back to our text file. We have pool.etn.spacepools.org colon 5555. And then we're going to paste that uh, right into our program there. Our username, which is our wallet address. That's the other thing we copied down. So it's always going to start with ETN. That's how you know it's the right link there. So ETN. Uh, so we're going to copy that. We're going to paste that into this command prompt. Press enter. No password because uh, the pool doesn't require a password. So we can just press enter again, leave that blank. We're gonna press no, 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 and now we're all set. So now this is starting mining, but right now I'm actually gonna close out of that. There's one other thing that we need to change um, so that we can use another program here. We're gonna come up to the config file. We're gonna press enter, and we're gonna scroll down until you see HTTPD port. So this one right here, and it's set to zero. But right now, uh, we're gonna change that to 100. All right, so make sure you press save, and then we're gonna come back to our files here. And we're gonna actually press a different program this time called run hash rate monitor down here. So you see this run underscore hash rate monitor batch file. We're gonna press that. And once this starts up, I'm gonna kind of explain what this is doing. Basically, this is a program that's going to monitor your mining program because what happens sometimes, and this happened to me a lot when I started mining before this program came out, was that the mining would sometimes, the program would freeze up or the computer would restart or something would cause the graphics card to get stuck. And then that would cause you to lose a lot of mining time. And time is very valuable in terms of actually you know, producing coins. So what this is gonna allow you to do is this program overviews your system and makes sure that the mining program is running at its full potential. If it notices that it's starting to slow down, it'll restart the program and reset your card driver so that it's getting the full potential. That way you're not missing on, on any revenue. So now that this is started up here, we can kind of see what's going on. Uh, so we can see that on this computer here, this is one of my lesser rigs. So this only has, I think, a GTX 770 in it. We're getting about 336 hashes per second. It's gonna wait about 100 seconds to get an average so that it knows what your system should be getting. And then it'll once that 100 seconds is up, it's going to continue to compare your current hash rate with the hash rate that it's expecting. So say right now I'm gonna at 336. If my system starts to go down to like 200, it's gonna be like, well, that's a pretty big difference. There's something going wrong. Let me restart the program and make sure that uh, you know everything is kind of at its full potential. So that's going to give you kind of an advantage over uh, just monitoring yourself because sometimes you can't always be checking 24 seven to make sure that your system is up and running. Uh, so we can see here we actually mining we logged into the pool as you can see the difficulty is now changing to make sure that my hardware is getting the full potential that it can achieve and then actually we can come back to our etn.spacepool.org we can go to home and then if you enter in that address that we copy down here this one if you copy and paste that into this lookup and press search and we give it about i don't know two minutes you'll start to see that we're going to be submitting hashes and that we're going to start mining electronium. Now with this pool, it has a payout of 10 electronium. Basically you have to make a total of 10 electronium before that gets added to your wallet. There's a reason for that. It's mostly to make sure that um, the blockchain isn't flooded with a ton of transactions because then that would make our lives a lot harder with mining. So basically if we limit it at 10, there's gonna be, uh, it still takes a little bit to get there. It doesn't take that long luckily with a decent system and that's going to reduce the size of the blockchain and the ledger, meaning that it's more accessible because this is supposed to be a mobile currency. So we need smaller files and smaller transactions. So to use uh, a little bit higher payout, uh, it's going to make sure that that stuff is actually achievable in the future. So if we just keep kind of refreshing this page here, we will likely start to see our hashes increase. And then you can kind of keep track of that and see how your Electronium is doing. So once this pending balance reaches 10, which I'm almost at actually, it's going to then deposit into my wallet. And as you can see, I've gotten a bunch of 10 um, 
received here, and then that's going to add up to your total wallet balance, and then you can use that how you please. So that's really how you get set up. It's, like I said, very easy, just a few steps, a few different programs you need to download, and a few different websites you need to sign up for, but luckily, it's all very easy to kind of see what's going on and understand what's happening. So I just want to say thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them. If you guys like the video, please press like. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't, because I'm going to be making a little bit more of these videos about how to actually, like, what you can do with this currency and how to use it in the future and, like, what's supposed to be happening. Because uh, there's a few other exchanges coming out. There's a bunch of different ways that you can actually use it to buy things or actually convert it into U.S. dollars. If you really want to do that, I'd recommend holding for the time being with the currency being a little bit low in terms of price because of the whole Bitcoin slump. But uh, that's really all you need to get started. So I hope you guys are successful with this. Let me know how it goes for you guys. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.